everyone, it's Tracy. It's time for my November Decks and Things video. Um, in my last video, I mentioned that I had started a new system where I was going to use one tarot deck and one oracle deck a week for my personal daily draws to try and actually use my decks so that I could get to know them and get to know if they were going to stay in my collection or not. Now, granted, I do have some decks that I'm going to keep even if I don't use them because I'll, I might use them for study or I just think they're so gorgeous I can't give them up. But then I have a whole collection of other decks that I, I got to use and am not using them, so I'm going to try to use them for a week and see if we get along. And if we don't, I will put them in a pile to pass along. And probably sometime in the new year, I'll start posting the pass along decks somewhere. Uh, I really, I thought I might want to trade them, but most of the time I don't think I want to trade them because my collection is already so huge. I really probably just need to downsize my collection some. So I'll probably be selling a few and I might just give away a few for the cost of shipping. It depends on the deck. Uh, but I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to handle that because this is the first month and I've, you know, I've used eight decks for the experiment and it has gone very well because a week for me is enough time to get the to get to know the deck well enough to know if I want to use it. If I try to use a deck for a whole month, I just get bored with it and I move on and I don't use it for a whole month regardless of my best intentions. So here are the decks that I used in November for this experiment. And I started out with Stella's Tarot. I got this deck in a trade at some point. I don't even remember who from, so I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't trimmed it or anything. It's a nice deck. I the the images for me are just a little bit too small to see. And I've seen Katie Flowers trimmed version, and that that's nice, but that. That doesn't help with the image size issue. So I did not connect with this deck. Um, this is not going to be a deck I use on a regular basis. This one is going to go into the trade pile. And the same week that I used the Stella's Tarot, I used the Black Moon Astrology cards for my Oracle deck. And these these are these are pretty nice. I like them. They're they're relatively new. I don't know if you can get them in the US from like Amazon yet. I had to get them from the book depository, so they came from Australia. I don't know a whole lot about astrology. Well, I know nothing about astrology. So I was looking for a deck that might help teach me a little bit about astrology. And at the same time, be an oracle deck that I could use just as an oracle deck. And I think this one might help with that. I really love the images on this deck. They're just... They're beautiful. They're collage but in sort of a ethereal sort of way. And there are, you know, there are more than just the, the 12 zodiac signs. There's um, planet, uh, like here, this is Mercury retrograde. We have a moon for the soul. We have houses, the different houses. And using this deck for a week, I haven't gotten to know it well enough to know what all of these things mean, but I have gotten to know it well enough to know that I want to. I want to keep using this one. So this one's going to be a keeper. I might have to do a borderectomy on this one. I'm not sure yet. I think those beige borders are holding stuff in. I mean, if you look at that card, it's got a lot of vitality to it. And if I take the borders off, it might, it might be too much. It might kind of explode all over the place. Or it might be really, really nice. So I'm not sure yet whether or not I'm going to take those borders off. But we'll see. So that was week one. Week two, I picked up the Kuan Yin, Wild Kuan Yin Oracle. 
and the Voyager Tarot. And if you watched my last video, I talked a good bit about the Voyager Tarot and the fact that I think the artwork is heinous and hideous, but I love this deck. I can read with this deck. And isn't that the point? These are actually, I put them back in order. I was comparing them to the Thoth deck to see if the keywords lined up with Thoth, and they don't. Uh, but you, this is just, I mean, the artwork is horrible. The color of those borders, sort of pea green, is awful. But the images that he used on the cards make sense to me. They click with me. I understand the meaning he's trying to convey in the images from, from the images. And it doesn't hurt that the book for this one is just really great. Really great. So I showed enough of this one. Oh, that's a great one. And in the, in the expanded book that I have, every single small image from, you know, Jupiter to this person to that hand, everything was explained as to why it was there. So I really like this deck. This is definitely a keeper. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same of the Wild Kuan Yin. The artwork is gorgeous, just gorgeous on that deck. But the deck makes no sense to me. And I think I have since discovered, after going through a few more of my Oracle decks, that Alana Fairchild is just not for me. Um, I don't, I, I just don't get the message that she's trying to convey. And that's a beautiful, beautiful image. I don't understand from looking at it what it has to do with the keywords. And then when I read in the book what the card means, I don't get the connection between the text in the book, the image, and the keywords. Sometimes they would the the at least the keywords and the text from the book would make sense together, but then the image wouldn't make sense. Or the image and the text in the book would make sense, but the keyword wouldn't make sense. And that's just me. You know, that's me. Some people love this deck, I know that. But this is not going to be a deck that I can use. I don't like that some of them are landscape and some of them are portrait. I love the artwork. I mean, isn't she just the most gorgeous person? But looking at that image and the keyword, the snow shepherdess, I don't, I get no intuitive hits off of it. I have to use the book. And there are decks that I, I have to use the book for, but... I don't know. I didn't connect with this one. <laughs> this one is going in the in the trade pile. Let's see now. Week three, I used the Vision Quest <clears throat> and Spirit of the Wheel. Let's see. I've got little notes about what I. The Vision Quest worked really well for multi-card readings when I did multi-cards, but I had a little bit of trouble if I was just pulling one card. I have debordered this deck because of the, not because of the fronts, but because of the backs. But how would you, why would you mess up that beautiful, gorgeous back by surrounding it with that horrible white border? <clears throat> This deck worked okay for me. Uh, I could, I generally could understand the message that was being conveyed by the image, generally. Uh, the artwork is beautiful. Like I said, it worked really well with multiple cards. So when I did three card draws, the, the meanings of the three cards together meshed together really well. But here's, here's one. Um, I'm not real fond of keywords. They're not bad, awful all the time, but I prefer not to have them. And if you look at this one, it's three of air and it's doubt. And I, I just see three feathers in the air. I, it's a little pippish and I don't do well, very well with, with pip decks. I need, I need scenic miners, but it is pretty. And since I bordered it, border chopped it so bad, I'm going to keep this one for a while. I'm not looking to to trade this one. I, I think it might just not be its time yet. 
I might just need to put it away for a little while and come back to it at some point in the future. So here we go with the vision quest. Now the spirit of the wheel, I did not connect with this deck at all. And part of it was publication issues, the way they chose to publish the deck. Uh, these are the backs and these are the fronts. And when they're all kind of laid out and around, I, I had a hard time telling the back from the front. I didn't see how the image told the story. The keywords told the story. And it just, it didn't, it didn't click with me. So just no connection. And I just, I am, um, I didn't. The thing was, when I was using the, this this deck and the Vision Quest deck that week, I was not excited to do my to do my daily draws like I was some of the other weeks when I was working with some of the other decks. So I think it's just more of a, yeah, this isn't working for me than anything else. So there you go. And then this past week, I have been using the Enchanted Tarot. And... Sacred Creator's Oracle. The Enchanted Tarot is nice. I I like it. Yeah, I love the backs. The backs are just gorgeous. I had the same issue with this deck that I had with several of the other decks that while it's very pretty, I'm not getting the meaning of the Five of Wands from the image on the Five of Wands. So I had to go with, you know, just my general understanding. Here, see, here's the Seven of Hearts, which is the Seven of Cups. Uh, I'm just not, I'm not getting anything from that. And while it's a pretty deck, and, and I'm not looking to get rid of this one either, it's, it's probably not one that I'm going to be pulling out very often. It was when I was using this deck that I discovered that I needed the picture to actually tell me the story or else just put words on the on the deck and don't bother with the picture there's lots of um you know see look at this card there's lots of pretty imagery on this card all this frou frou fluffy fan stuff but that doesn't help tell the story so i've just i've discovered that i want 99 percent of the image that's showing up on my card to help tell the story rather than to just be there for decorative purposes yeah, I think those fans are just there to, the, they're fan, fans on all of the majors. So there you go. Just, I'm going to keep this one. It's so pretty and I might pull it back out and use it again, but not my favorite. Sacred Creators, on the other hand, is one of my favorites because it is, it's just words. And I like words. Words work for me. And I also think that the, the coloration is very attractive. So definitely keeping the sacred creators. It goes very it went very it goes very well with lots of decks. But one of my favorite Oracle decks is the Color Mage, which is nothing but a color and a couple of keywords. I love that. Love, love, love that. So it wouldn't be surprising that the sacred creators would also be in my love pile. And I'm really excited to see her, her new tarot deck. So those are the decks that I used for those daily draws in November. I also did a little bit of Into the Wildwoods. Um, those prompts that were on Facebook and Instagram. I used the Wildwood Tarot. I, I don't like the Wildwood. I, I was okay with it until I got to... The sixth of something. I can't remember what it is. Sorry, I don't have that one pulled out. But it got really preachy about environmental issues. And while I'm all for saving the environment, I don't want my decks to preach at me. I want my decks to give me messages and let me preach it myself. So that was that was it. That just it's kind of like when I was working with um, the Deviant Moon, and I started reading the big book for the Deviant Moon. And his interpretation of so many of the cards 
well, particularly the Hierophant, was so very negative that it just completely turned me off. I said, this is not for me. So I had that same reaction to, to the Wildwood. Uh, I probably won't get rid of that one simply because it's so inexpensive that why would anybody want to use copy when you can get a brand new copy for like $12? But it, it's, it's not a deck for me. And that's just been very interesting so far in this four-week experiment that out of the eight decks that I've used, I've found two that I really liked, um, one that I liked, and then the rest of them were eh or no. So maybe I started out with some decks that were a little bit, I don't know, challenging for me. We'll see. We're going to continue this experiment and we're going to continue to try to make videos about this experiment and see how it goes. I also, uh, in November, there was a gem show in my town and I just wanted to do a little bit of show and tell about the stuff, some of the stuff that I got at the gem show, including this clear crystal cluster. That's beautiful. And this is a, oh, it's got a lighted candle in it. This is a peach selenite, a piece of peach selenite that's a candle holder. Don't want to dip it too far. It's just lovely. There it is without the flame so you can see the color. I got two of these pieces of, they're carnelian, um, but they're brown carnelian. They're not, not red, so they weren't very expensive but they're carved into the shape of flames. And this one even has, I'm trying to show, there we go. The, um, the geode goes, there's a hole all the way through it with little teeny crystals on the inside. It's really cool. And this was, oops. See, there is a little backside with the hole. And this one is primarily clear. It has a beautiful sort of splash there. But I just love these. They're, they're so pretty. And they weren't terribly expensive. And then my my prize from the gem show. I have just fallen in absolute love with this piece of pyrite. It's really big for a piece of pyrite. Just beautiful. Uh-oh. I just broke a teeny tiny bit off of it. Oh, no. And then yesterday I got my... um. Extraordinary Oracle, which I've seen some unboxings of the, or I thought I'd seen some unboxings of the Extraordinary Oracle, and I don't recall ever seeing little presents in the packet with them, but with my Extraordinary Oracle, I got this, I don't know if it's glass or if it's crystal, it might be glass, a piece of Palo Santo. And this lovely little lady that, you know how occasionally you'll just come across an object and you'll say, oh, that object is mine. It was intended for me. She was intended for me. She has a little piece of amethyst in her lap. So that came with my Extraordinary Oracle. You know, I, I may not have just been paying attention. Those may come with everybody's Extraordinary Oracles. But I was just so delighted to see them, particularly... I don't know, she needs a name. Her name is Helen. I think her name is Helen. Anyway, that's my November, my little wrap up. Thanks for watching if you stuck through with this and have a great December.